commentator Douglas Herbert. And Doug, look, there are still some major questions unanswered, but we do have a slightly clearer picture today about what happened yesterday. And at least the U.S. saying things like this have happened before. Yeah, look, similar incidents like this occur all the time. Mm. We have these types of close encounters, if you will, between U.S. and NATO uh, aircraft and Russian fighters in zones where they are both present, military patrolling zones and surveillance drones, so on and so forth. You, you come close. It's a, you know, you, 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 you approach. You get a little look in. You let the other side know we see you and you move on and, and it's over. And you usually know it doesn't become a big headline. Line, like like today. What sets us apart, as you said, is from the U.S. perspective, the Russian plane's behaviors here were reckless, were irresponsible, were incompetent, were environmentally unsound, and downright dangerous. Mm. Because they didn't just approach and get a look in and then move away and move on. What they did, according to the Pentagon, is they circled around this drone, not for two or three minutes, for 30 to 40 minutes, got in front of it, blocked it, jumped dumped jet fuel on it to destabilize the drone, perhaps also to block its sensors, its cameras, so they couldn't see anything. Um, and, and, you know, the rest is history. The, dr the drone goes spiraling down, and, and the U.S. ultimately had to bring the drone down. It was, uh, you know, a controlled crash into the Black Sea. But look, we have seen this happen before. The U.S. and the Pentagon see this as uh, not simply an accident. They see this as part of a broader pattern of harassment and intimidation, no false equivalency here, by Russian aircraft in these types of in incidents. Uh, you'll remember back in 2015, Turkey uh, shot down a Russian attack aircraft that had strayed near its border with Syria. In the same year, the U.S. and Russia supposedly signed what was called a Memorandum of Understanding about um, not about you know not getting provocative or confrontational between uh, aircraft patrolling Russian and coalition aircraft in Syrian airspace. That obviously fell by the wayside because just last autumn, late last September, we had a Russian missile. Uh, released uh, a released missile by a Russian aircraft uh, in the direction in near uh, a Ro Royal Air Force uh, uh, UK jet uh, in international waters, also over the Black Sea. That was described as a technical malfunction. Both sides perhaps trying to play it down, dilute it. But the general pattern is there. Time and again, the Western alliance says it is one side and one side only that seems to be going out of its way to create a situation where just this type of thing can occur and being extra provocative and extra harassing. OK, so the United States Russia says Russia is being extra provocative. But as is often the case with situations like this, the Russian perspective is, is rather different, isn't it? Yeah, rather different. And I'm going to this is not he said, she said. Let's be very clear here. One side is essentially lying or or tell or dis assembling. Let's use a lighter term there. Uh, look, what do the Russians say? Well, the Russians say that their jets, you know, merely approached, as I was talking about before, to get a little look in, um, that suddenly the drone sharply maneuvered, lost control, spiraled out of control, went crashing into the Black Sea. Uh, as you said earlier, its transponders were off. It was drifting towards the Russian border. It's all very menacing. The bottom line here is the truth in these situations is whatever Russia says. Whatever Russia says happened is what happened. In its dis disinformation ecosystem, Russia always has the moral high ground. It always has an ironclad monopoly on the truth in any of these incidents. You tell them otherwise, Otherwise, you are simply lying. And you are lying why? Because every one of these incidents from the Russian perspective boils down to one thing. Ultimately, as part of a broader Western machination, Western US slash NATO slash Europe plotting to somehow do something to humiliate and be provocative towards Russia and to bring Russia and the great motherland to its knees. This is simply the narrative in Russia. And it's, it's the same with this again, the same way a military grade poison ended up in Alexei Navalny's underwear inexplicably, the same way one oligarch after another seems to be tumbling out of high-rise windows and balconies accidentally. Uh, we see this pattern time and again. The truth is whatever Russia says it is, if you accuse Russia of wrongdoing, you are wrong and Russia will deny it. There's no winning this information war.